Yeah. Oh, where's that? Oh, the microphone. That's right there. I don't know if we really need it. I don't think it'll even do anything. Testing, testing. And it overlies, uh, it goes, it roughly changes. Now there's a, it's a kind of a, a wavy boundary or punctuated, what do you call it? I can't remember what you call it. Uh, boundary's not perfect layer cake. So it does undulate quite a bit, but you do see from this nice, beautiful, um, well, not rock free, but you know, there's a few pea gravel in here. It's not very, not very much gravel. And it transitions into a, uh, uh, it transitions into this pretty quickly and really quickly. So what you see here, and he irrigated this morning, although it's not completely gone down to the interface, what you'll see is this, this wetting pattern here will we'll hit that boundary. And then you know, we only hear it, what, two hours? Three. Three. Um, if, he, if he irrigated for eight hours, we've done this like 12 hours, you'll find that he'll, we'll find that it doesn't go past that boundary. What I'll do is fan out this way and this way, end up driving over it with your tractor and compacting it. So we found that irrigating longer, we tried, we tried several things and we really didn't realize this until we put the probe in and realized it wasn't registering below 16 inches. Uh, what the heck's going on after a while it was only eight inches even though we put on more water and then we dug back up this and we verified that what we're seeing here um we realized we couldn't irrigate the way we've been irrigating because every year the lines would, would well in this area big big chunk of this, this block would just essentially defoliate and we call it crash um, especially with the rootstock so4 not known for coming back you really can't you couldn't irrigate it enough to come back at the same time, we also noticed that in the springtime and in early summer, there was still a lot of moisture down deep that it was getting to. So we still didn't need to irrigate in you know May or June. We were, you know, but we did need to start irrigating in what I don't know July, um, and then once we started irrigating, we, we had to keep up on it. So now we're kind of here on an every other day cycle. Uh, small small drinks every other day. What were uh, you before? What were you before? Doing? Once a week. Yeah. A larger amount. Yeah. Six to eight once a week. So you're not necessarily using significantly less water, but you're mm -mm. spacing it out in a way that's better for the plant. Yep. Yeah, and this in Chardonnay, it's SO4. We know we don't want to stress it because if it stresses it, it tends to stay stressed. So it closes the mata and stays, you know, get the yellow basal leaves. And then the vines would crash. The following year, they'd be weaker because they crashed early, which is very, you know, we see a lot. If you get really stressed vines, they don't build the carbohydrate storage that that they otherwise would and you get weak shoot growth so it's kind of a perpetual effect if not it gets worse over time so this last couple of years or last year and this year well last year we were getting much differently the vines came back a lot stronger they're still not where david really wants them to be i'm sure but like you said the, the spots shrinking the stressed area is shrinking and um, even in the weaker areas they're, they're stronger than they used to be so it's it's all about managing to the site but what I generally find in, in almost any soil, even even with the soil we're going to see in a little bit, the, the heavier soils, still these the shallower irrigations, even though they're probably a little more evaporation going on, so we're getting a little more evaporative loss. We've got a lot more tight control over the uh, over the water status of, of the vine by modifying the the interval. That said, if you're growing vines that aren't, aren't going into the best program, irrigating deeply might be just fine. Um, if you can, but like I said, a lot of soils, I'd say probably more than half the soils I, I work with, we can't irrigate deeply. And so we're always up against this kind of situation. Maybe, maybe not as striking and distinct as this, but um, in some fashion, we can't get water deep, uh, even with all these artificial uh, methods. And I think the ripping does, does help, and I think the transformer helped to some extent, but you know how the, it, it does cost money. So um, you can do some remediation, but you really... In many cases, you just can't get 100% to where you want to be. So you notice in these soils, I didn't want to point this out, and it's a little hard to see right now because this has been open since Tuesday. A lot of these roots are kind of falling down, but a lot of these roots at the interfaces, they grow horizontally. So you see these kind of, these roots actually here is a really good example. You see these roots kind of growing out horizontally. And so that's because 
um, they, they tend not to want to grow into the into the gravel after they've been in the, the nice loam or, or sandy loam soil they want to stay there that's where most of the water is being held and it's where also also most of the nutrients are so they tend you tend to find that horizontal root growth and this doesn't show it super well but a lot of times you'll see this like shelves of roots like a, a distinct shelf I call it shelf but uh, a bunch of roots growing on the same the same depth horizontally and then maybe you'll see another one a little bit deeper below that and we had another pit that we opened up some rows over that kind of showed that maybe even a little better uh, you do see a lot of fine roots down here in this real gravelly soil uh, 